maybe two, three, four. Okay. Among yourselves, we know, we are sure of your competence. Bid. We are sure of your integrity in this business. So, this is restricted bidding. For the federal government in the public service, you can't, you are not permitted to use this method except you first get an approval from the Bureau of Public Procurement that's in a public institution in Nigeria. But, of course, this is private. We can determine who gives such approval here. Maybe the council or the proprietor, as the case may be, as may be considered appropriate. Next. Now, these are the, uh, the procurement methods that are the most common ones. And the project that we're doing, whatever we want to do, we determine which is most appropriate, like I've tried to explain. Now, when we're talking of contract lotting, I will soon be rounding off the first part so that my brother will be happy with me. How many means do I have left? Seven. All right. I like your clock, the way it works. <laughs> now, budget, now when you're talking of contract lotting, now, see, I'm sure some of you have seen before the, there's a construction of road, lot one, lot two. Now, how do we determine this lot? Now, when you're talking of after you have uh, done your planning, the particularly, it could even be, it could be procurement attempts, that is, purchases, supplies. Now, you can now aggregate those with, that are similar into one group. You put them into group. For example, you know you want to buy uh, computers, you want to buy uh, paper, you want to buy what other things? Maybe perforating machines, all those things. Now, if as a single item it becomes too big or you feel that it is not the same person that sells the, that sells paper that we sell the computer to separate them. You can now say uh, procurement of office materials lot one. Lot one would be supply of paper. Lot two is still the same procurement of office items Lot two will be supply of computer systems. So these are lots. So budget items are split as appropriate for procurement if necessary. That is, so that for ease of procurement, is this the same, uh, is for office equipment, is still the same budgetary item, but you now have lot one, lot two, lot three. So the budget items are split up into the required number of lots per budget item. That is, each item in the budget, it can just be, I mean, just for office, for cleaning, then you have, I mean, cleaning services, then you have lot one, maybe lot one will be clean of the Senate building and the faculty of wherever. So you break it so that for ease of management, so that it will, be, it will not be unwitting. So that's what we mean by contract lotting. These are what you should be familiar with in the procurement process, you must be familiar with it because these are the things you do every day. Next. Okay. For each contract lot, assign contract number, description of contract, budget, this administrative, that is so for identification. The sum of the budgets for the contract lots in a budget item must be equal to the budget for that budget item. Like if we're talking about uh, procurement of office equipment. By the time you add the cost of the computers, lot one, of uh, papers, lot two, it must be the same amount. So it's just the same item that you are splitting into lots. Then for each contract lot, specify whether goods, works, and services. For services, specify whether consultant and non consultant services. When you are talking of goods, you are talking of, I mean, buying things like this computer. You just buy items. When you're talking of works, you're talking of construction. And we are talking of services. Services can be consultant services and non consultant services. Consultant services is when you engage, for example, you engage an architect, you engage an engineer to do a design. That's a consultancy. Or in consultancy in other areas also. It could be in a software development, this consultancy. No consultancy services also, maybe for cleaning services. You engage cleaning contractors. This is services. 
and these non-consultant services. So that's what we mean by those. So for each contract, law, decide the procurement method and pre-qualification. So you now decide how this, based on our knowledge of the uh, procurement method. Can we take the next slide? Okay. This is where I said I will stop for this session. So implementation of the procurement plans begins with solicitation for bids through advertisement. So you advertise. You have decided everything is on ground what you want to do. You want to build a house, whatever it is. Then you let those, the prospective suppliers, you now let them know. The ones you should advertise, whether on the internet, you put it on the internet, on the notice board, you put it there. The one that is for the newspaper, you put it in the newspaper so that you can uh, bring in the best that's available in the land. So I think I will pause here. Thank you very much, sir. Please let's applaud, let's applaud our speaker as he goes to have a seat momentarily. Thank you very much, sir, Engineer Kende Ajibola, for this wonderful presentation. We have learned a lot, and for me, my take home is this effective procurement system or process is a veritable way to block leakages in the finances of an institution or organization. The next we have on our agenda is the discussion, questions, or contribution from our audience, both online and those who are physically present. Anyone with any question or contribution to what we have had so far. Thank you, Dr. Ilori, number one. Okay, secondly, Professor Ho Yero. Is there any other person? Okay, sorry, okay, Mr. Okun, Olayinka. Okay, I'll give the opportunity to our first signifier, that's Dr. Ilori. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, our speaker. We really appreciate your um, the lecture. I just, uh, you, your, your presentation, you did not talk about uh, bad practices of procurement processes. I don't know if that will come up later. Bad practices. Bad practices of procurement processes. But I just want to add this, that I know you talk about um, lotting, contract lotting. What is the difference between contract lotting and contract uh, splitting? Uh, because I know it's, it's not proper to split uh, contracts. But now you have given us another word as lotting. What is the difference between the two? Thank you very much, sir. So I think we should receive all the old questions. We should receive the old questions so that you can answer all at the same time. Okay, for Professor Oyeru. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful lecture you have given us. Um, while the The lecture has been, has been well understood, especially against the background of uh, blocking leakages. However, sometimes when you look at uh, procurement, it appears that the process, in a way, seems to cheat on the corporate system and it appears that the, the process is also designed to actually open up leakages rather than blocking. Let me give you an example. When 
people are invited to supply products, equipment to let's say institutions like this and they supply their quotations three, four persons. Now, we have had cases where when you do the real-time market survey, you discover that the prices these contractors are quoting are far, far beyond what is obtainable in the market. But from the presentation today, I've discovered that you know, procurement does not really encourage the idea of an institution going to purchase things by yourself and all of that. So I, I don't know how do we uh, make, make this uh, balance, especially when you understand that in the present economy, you are dealing with deadly resources. And uh, if I go to the market, I discover that I can buy the same quality. I can buy it for 5,000 naira. But by the time the contractor supply their own quotations and all of that, <laughs> hardly will you be able to, by, by the time you consider all the other contractors, you, you hardly beat down in a distance beyond maybe, sometimes double the price that you get, get them in the market. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. The next, Mr. Oko Ola Yinka. Can we have your question or contribution? Yeah, thank you very much. Two questions to ask you. Um, the first one is now related to what Professor Oyeru has um, asked. There have been instances that we wanted to get things in the lab. Um, the same person that is supplying to the university will tell you for you to buy it is 30,000 Naira. But when now it's time to supply to the university, it could be 80,000 Naira. And we tell you, well, the reason for that is that you coming to buy it, you are paying right away. And, you know, you get it at that price. But supply to the university, he has to do this and do this and that. And be, you know, besides, the money will not be paid outrightly. So in the long run, one way or the other, a lot of money has gone. So how do we really resolve that? Now, the second thing, sir, um, in your Based on the planning, at the planning stage, we talked about needs assessments, and we talked about um, the need to consult um, the end users. Um, I was in a similar program in PG School University of Ibadan, and this same issue came up. That most times, the procurement people or whoever is doing the thing will not carry the end users along. And because the end users are not carried along, this material equipment is purchased, but on the long run, it seems useless to the end user. And it will be there, but the end user cannot use it. There are a lot of instances that can be cited even here on this um, campus. So what advice do you have for such? And when it happens, how do you think it can be resolved? Because the equipment cannot be used properly and the money has been spent. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think we have one um, question from our online audience. So you are permitted to ask your question. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. And my name is Peter Gibbo from Nanaba. Let our online audience speak louder or speak out. Um, just post it.
Our online audience, you can write out your question and post it for our facilitator to be able to. that have been asked so far. Well, these are very interesting questions, and I must confess, I expected them. Hello? Now, Hello? let me start from the person that said, I didn't talk about the bad practices. I only talk about what is good. Of course, bad is opposite. The competition, is, the thing is uh, flawed, is compromised. So when there's bid rigging, there are so many we can, the list is endless. Anything that does not satisfy the good practices is a bad practice. I think that's a formula that is generic. And we can now bring out so many practices. If for, okay, I think I will mention that in the next, uh, in the next, Part, I mean, the, the, the part two of the presentation. If the plan, like we said, is competitive, it's just like an examination. Examination is supposed to be a competition. And if somebody now sees the question ahead of time, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's not good. It's bad. Exam are practice. Also, when they are competing and the in house estimate, if it's leaked, to any of the contractor, which does happen, that is bad practice. So we can go on. Now, the difference between contract lift, uh, lotting and contract splitting. Now, when we're talking of lotting, lotting happens at the planning stage. Do you get it? Ever before you start anything, even before you put prices on them, that is when you have said you have aggregated them based on the principles that I gave you. Now, contract splitting. So, when we are talking of lotting, it is a planning issue. It's at the planning stage, like I've explained. When you are talking about splitting, it happens at the execution stage. Now, what happens is this. Now, when you want to do, there are thresholds. I will mention it later. There are thresholds what the chief executive can approve, what the tenders board can approve, what the, in the public service, the ministerial tenders. Now, it becomes contrast splitting. When you now discover that this microphone will cost 20,000 naira and the visit can only approve 10,000 naira. Now say, okay, remove the head. You now say you buy microphone, 10,000 naira, microphone head, another 10,000 naira, so that the VC can approve 10,000 naira. It has not proved, approved more than 10,000 That is splitting. It's still the same thing that you have done twice to evade that threshold. But when it is lotting, you have not uh, evaded any threshold, and there's an objective basis even for regrouping the attempts, and it's at the planning stage before you even know how much it will cost. But in this case, you have known how much it will cost. You now split it so that you don't have to be supervised by the next authority. So that's where it becomes contract splitting. Now, somebody uh, says that the procurement process, it cheats and it opens up leakages because the contractor prices are always higher. Now, the contractor prices are higher in some cases. Like, you know, I did mention when it comes to small items, you don't have to go through all the process. Now, it will be higher, one, 
Because even the process, it costs. There's a cost that is in, in process. They will, like if I'm a contractor now, I will buy, uh, I will buy the tender document and so many other things. And all these costs, eventually, of course, if he keeps doing that, taking money and not making money, putting money in the system, it will run bankrupt. At the end of the day, these things will be part of what the institution will pay. That's the reality. Now, in the public, of course, it will pay tax. If you go to buy in the market, chances are 9 out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, that they are not paying any tax. So the person will pay tax. For example, in the ball or when the money will come out. And with this kind of economy, it's, I mean, tomorrow the prices can be anything. Now, that is one side of the story. But somebody will now say, why do we still have to go through the process that's expensive? Now, I'm sure some of you, you know that there are some items you can get at Oshodi. But you decide to go to ShopRite or to a departmental store. Why? Ah, hey, you said it. Because I'm on your address, you can follow up on them. The person that's selling the traffic, even though it's cheaper, you must, I mean, at the end of the day, you may discover you have just, I mean, thrown your money away, even though it looks cheaper in the immediate. But when you go to a place that has a, if anything goes wrong, you can even return it. So that is what you are paying for most of the times. And for an institution, that is the way to, to go. Because at the end of the day, you may discover it's cheaper in the long run than for you, the one that's seemingly cheap. Then also, if you keep doing that, okay, just say, uh, Ajibola, because uh, I know you're honest, take money and go and buy. Which means the system will depend on individuals. If tomorrow the occupier of the office is not that honest, you go, do you get it? I can be changing. So that's why it's good to have a system in place that is not dependent on the character that is there now. Otherwise, it won't be a system. It will be rising and falling depending on who is available. But when there's a standard in place, of course, if you have an advantage in the personnel, you may vary it within acceptable uh, range to take advantage of that character. But there must be a standard that if you are not honest, the system will, uh, the, the, the system will nip you in the board. I mean, we know what happened in America recently when Donald Trump was president. Things that we thought could not happen in America, they happened. But because the system was strong, that's why America could not go overboard. But it had been dependent on individuals. Today, you have maybe director procurement or whoever it is that is honest or a bosser. Tomorrow, you cannot be too sure that that will be the case. But if there's a system in place, the system will arrest or at least minimize or all together throw the person up. So that's why you have to have a system in place. You cannot just be saying, because today, I know Prof is a honest man. We have to take money. Go and buy it and bring it to us. We are not sure the next person will be that honest. So there's a system that will be fitting for the honest and the not so honest. So that is why it's, I mean, it has to be like that. And buying directly is fraught with a lot of uh, it can be done for small items, but for big items, for large projects, it may be fraught. If you have ever even undertaken a personal building project, you know what I'm talking about. When I was building my house, and my landlord, that's some years ago, he gave me a quick notice. So I was determined, before the end of that year, by December, I will move, because my rent was expiring. So I called one of the the artist, of course, you know many people. So one of the, uh, the carpenter. So, and I said, the doors, do, I want it, I mean, it's urgent. Ah, I said, okay, I see, see wala, no problem. When, if money is on ground. So I gave him the money because I was in a hurry. I have not seen the money after about 20 something years. <laughs> yes. Now, when I waited, and I had to look for somebody else. Now, his own was cheaper, but if it's somebody with address, that will not be possible. I cannot even sue him. I'm not sure he has a bank account. The next time I just met him by choice, 
he just prostrated. He was much older than me. Ah, your guy. Of course. What does it? So sometimes what is seemingly cheap may not be cheap in the long run. Because I have to spend twice. That's not the first. That's another one. It's because it's a relation of a friend, an in-law, very close. Before I collected the money, we'd be in my house 6 a.m. Waited. After I collected him, I'm not seeing him till now. I'm telling you, real life situation. It was to do the aluminium. And that's close to 20 years now. So, and for an institution to now be rising and falling like that, by the time you aggregate the losses and not the embarrassment, you discover it's cheaper to go through these, uh, 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 these principles. These are principles that have been distilled over time. Because all those factors have been looked into and they discover that for an institution is, in the long run, is better. Now, somebody talks about needs assessment that, is, uh, that doesn't carry the, uh, the end users along. That cannot be the whole truth. I mean, let me limit myself to my experience in the University of Ibadan. Now, there are times, and the reality many times is that it's the end user that does not carry the colleagues around. Let me give an example. There was, I want to be particular so that you can check. So that's why I'm giving details. There was a time we were to do a work. I was the director of works at Faculty of Veterinary, Veterinary Mercy. I've forgotten the department. I think maybe vet anatomy or something. I can't remember exactly. And the HOD that was there then, we did it. And our cause thing was, but over time, the, it was a code room. There was a problem with the refrigeration. So it was a new HOD that got there. So when the HOD got there, he, he said they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. So I was summoned. I didn't even remember. So I now, the person now reminded me that before any contractor is paid, the HOD will make it a policy. The end user will sign. So he now brought out the paper, and the head of the department said that the job was satisfactorily done. Now, of course, there was a problem later, but it was done. But the new person didn't know. Maybe it was not available because sometimes in the past there are some people that they don't flow with others. So when he now gets there, he just on his own. Then, like I give the example, when we were to have an intervention in 2009, we didn't sit down to just pick the project. We went from faculty to faculty and we insisted each dean must bring all the HODs. But sometimes it's part of what, it's just like what happens in Nigeria. If the government wants to do anything. They cannot go from house to house. They talk to our representatives in Abuja. Many of them don't get back to us. And they will take decisions on our behalf. So that's what happens. So many times, either the dean does not carry all the people along the HOD. So when it's no longer the dean and the other person gets there, is blank. He doesn't know what it is. There have been, okay, me, I can multiply examples. I can multiply examples. For example, when you wanted to build, do a building for faculty of pharmacy, now, the HOD then, a professor, let me not mention the names. Now, I mean, it was even the one that told us that, ah, that they have been thinking of this and they've gotten an architect to do it. I said, bring your drawing so that we can adapt it. It was the one that gave us and we looked at it. I mean, we corrected it and we did the building. So when he left, and another person came, a woman, he said, this building is useless. We don't know anything. They didn't tell us what. <laughs> that, which kind of thing? They just put laboratory. I know that. He didn't know that it was even family that gave us the drawing. I have it on record. I was the director. Was, I was the one they gave. So sometimes it's the internal uh, issue within the department. But it is not a right for any procurement person to just sit in his office and be taking all the decisions. But sometimes we act on available record. 
For example, we don't need solving the past and we know that you need this, which could not be met then due to budgetary limitation. It can, I mean, and it's brought up. But since I've, uh, like I said, the time I was director of works, I was also the procurement officer because I was everything. I was the procurement officer, I was the physical planning director because none of those, uh, all those functions were part of the functional director works then, even though they've been split now. So there was nothing that we would do in any department that we would not consult. And as a procurement officer, except if it didn't come through my table, I always insist the end users for the credit loan, and even before any supplier is paid, the, the head of the department must sign. They must sign that it's, they, they, they've supplied it. Then let me give another instance. Now, there was a time, okay, we wanted to, when we did uh, this needs assessment, so in the faculty of Agri, they said we should resuscitate the poultry that is in the teacher and research farm. So we did. By the time that the job was finished, the, the, the dean has left, has changed, is another person. So I go to the new person that they should sign they have completed the project. I said, no, they've not completed the project because what they did is not the modern poetry. There's no archery there and all that. And except those things are there, I will not sign. We will not say we did a word contract for poetry for that. So the VC has to intervene. Intervene and say, oh, okay, prof, now, that one was not part of this work. Whether by omission or whatever, those that were there before you, this is what they said. What you have said is very useful, but we keep it in view against the next project, which is what the VC did. We did this subsequently. Now, sometimes people don't understand how it works. They just feel that, hey, because the contractor, he should, not, he should put it two colors. Whereas what is in the contract is one color. So they keep the money outside the provision of the contract. So sometimes it's like that. But in most cases, particularly I can talk for UIO, and that's what it should be. The end users, and like I've said in my presentation, the end users should be carried along because I wonder we use it. Some of these equipment are specialized. I may not even know what the equipment do. So except those who will use it, they say this is what we want. Then sometimes, this is not really and is, is real and is not to ridicule anybody. Some, I said some, not all. Even some end user, they don't even know what they want. That happens. When they write equipment, when they specify, they miss out vital components. Because they too, maybe they just saw it in a book. The person that now knows better, maybe in the department, who had not been carried along, where now sees it. Say this is, this and this are missing. So, the solution is, when you are heading a unit, carry all those working with you along. Tomorrow, if any of them gets there, they'll be well familiar with what's going on. And, of course, there's the advantage of collective wisdom. So when two good days are always better than one. So, I think I've addressed according to my jottings. Thank you very much, sir. I think we have few online questions, and the course of um, you addressing the questions that were asked, I believe you said one or two things concerning them, but just to read them out, um, one person says, is procurement not a mere paperwork in reality? The second person is saying or asking, is it necessary to Google or find out the quoted price at the open market? And what is it and what is the percentage of markup to tolerate for the potential suppliers of items? That's, that's how it's been typed here. It says, is it, not necess is it necessary to go go find out the quoted price at the open market and what is the percentage of markup to tolerate for the potential suppliers of items? Well, the person that said it's paperwork, well, I wouldn't know what exactly. He should have explained. I mean, he said it's paperwork 
Of course, anything in reality is first a paperwork. Even the university, before it happened, it was a paperwork. You submitted paper to AUC, academic brief, uh, physical master plan, and all that. It was paperwork, but it's a reality now. Even the degree you have, some people thought they taught up the uh, curriculum. It was paperwork, but they work the paper, and it becomes a reality. So procurement, of course, it will be first paperwork, but when you work the paper, it becomes a reality. So I don't really know what's in the mind of the person, whether he says it doesn't work, I really, I don't want to guess. Maybe he will be able to, uh, uh, to elaborate so that we know exactly what he has in mind. Now, somebody talks about the price in the open market. Now, that is how the price is built up. It's not from Kevin, it's not by revelation. The prices you quote. Now, when you give out, you go to uh, a contractor, which I will mention later, you know, this, the uh, presentation has not ended. That's what we call, sometimes called reserved price. Sometimes called consultant price. Sometimes called in-house estimate. It's still the same thing. Now, that price is you. What you, through your market survey, you know this is what it costs. And every other contractor is judged according to your, to your price. So, that is, now, when you're talking of the price architecture, now, when you Google it now, you see this phone, uh, 200,000. Like I explained to you, now, the 200,000 Naira is not exactly what you bought it. Maybe you saw it at uh, Oshodi. You took taxi there. It's part of the cost. You came back home. If it's an object that is big enough, you have to pay for transportation. You say you bought the 200,000, but you have forgotten that you paid for the transportation also. When you got there, somebody offloaded it, you dash him 1,000 Naira. Now, those things are part of the cost. Now, I've told you also that in, at particularly in a public institution, at least 13.5% will never get to the contractor. It's not even get to his hands. Talk less of whether or not he will use it. He will pay for withholding tax. He will pay for VAT. He will pay for stamp duty. Basic. Basic. So, when you're talking of price, whatever you get it at the store, you have to add the cost of transportation and you have to add the taxes, the deductibles, then the profit margin. And when you're talking of, when somebody is asking for the percentage, it may not be fixed. If I bought an, uh, if I bought an item here in Lagos, the cost of transportation is different from when I buy it in Germany. The logistics, the custom duty, all those things will go into it. So, in our, but the components, the cost in building the, the price, the basic price, the cost of transportation, the cost of handling, then the cost of uh, the taxes and the, uh, and the profit margin. So the profit margin is usually around 10% plus or minus depending on the situation. But all those other factors have to be built in, otherwise the price won't be realistic. The person has not clarified. All right. So let's just go into the second part. I didn't know that this discussion would take this long. So I will try to be as fast as possible in the second part. Please, IT. Oh, 
Okay. So we're on the advantage. Then next slide. Now, the pre-qualification. I've talked about pre-qualification and the, I mean, it's technical evaluation. Criteria contained in the solution document are used to assess each bidder. Now, for example, apart from the technical competence, there are certain things that may be stated as requirements in the solicitation bid that is in the advert. So you, uh, you try to assess them based on that. If it's a government project, for example, you have to put evidence of tax clearance certificate. You have to put evidence of registration with PENCOM, that your company is registered, and so many other, I mean, mandatory requirements. So once you don't have those things, you are just not even considered. So those are the things you do when you are doing this uh, qualification, pre-qualification. Then the mandatory requirements, they are not negotiable. But there are other requirements that you grade them, you score them, so that you know that one is more qualified than others. So bidders are ranked based on the scoring. Then bidders are just to have to have satisfactorily performed the pre-qualification and subsequently evaluated for their financials. Please, let's go ahead. Then even when you are uh, in any bid, no matter how small, you first assess their technical competence before you look at their financial bid. Because you will have stated they should, I mean, their personnel, their equipment, their experience. You use this to evaluate them before you... Okay, I think I've talked about this when I was talking to them. Next slide. Now, when a bid is to be received, there are certain things that are very simple and common sense, they are a common sense thing, but they are very, very important. So, bids are open as soon as it closes. Normally, you don't, I mean, a bid does not close and you don't leave it until much later before you open it. The reason is that anything can happen, particularly in Nigeria. Somebody can remove the, can replace what they are submitted. For example, when you are opening, you have known that uh, Ajibola and Sons, Nigeria Limited, is quoting 9 million naira. Uh, Fanny Ron, uh, PLC, is quoting 10 million naira. And you know it's the lowest that they will give to. You just, if you know the procurement officer, you know, a bro, 8.5 by me fishy. So I dare you, you to fishy there and put it. So there will be, and at the end of the day, you will not even know. So the standard practice is that as soon as it closes, you open it. So there is no room for anything. So if it's closing at 12 noon, you open it maybe 1 o'clock, same day. So, or 12.30. So a register is opened for submission of bids. You open the register as they submit the register and the title of the project is stated, the name of the bidder, that is the person that is making the submission, is contained, date and time of submission are recorded. If it's submitting at 12.05, you record it as such. The financial bids are open now. And if any project, I mean, anyone submits late, is automatic disqualification. Because when we are talking of the closing time, you state the date and the time of the closing of the bid. You don't just say the bid will close on 25th of August. No. It will close at 12 noon, 25th of August. It will close at 3 p.m., 25th of August. So that you are specific. Whoever brings it at 3.01, you know he's late and is qualified. So the financial bids are opened in the presence of members of the procurement planning committee. Of course, this one can go by any name. We can call it due process committee, depending on what name. But that's the name that the government calls it. So it can be, of course, depending on the discretion of the money manager, they can put it. Of course, the chairman, the chairman is the vice chancellor. So they can call it any name, and there you have all the 
uh, the representative of the department that is, in fact, that's another control. The representative of the department, the, the procuring department, the end user, they are represented at the meetings. So the secretary of the PPC, that is the secretary of the due process, who ordinarily should be the procurement officer or director, whichever way. So publicly announces the amount quoted by HBDA. Now, when you are opening, which everybody must see that is sealed, you now open it, you read it, you read it out. Ajibola and Sons Nigeria Limited is quoting 14 million 251,000. You, you announce it. So everybody, all the competitors, everybody takes note of it. So that tomorrow, when your own is lower, you cannot come around to say, I mean, it's otherwise. So it's public. It's public. And other bidders are there when you're opening it. Everybody is represented. Represented. All those that submitted bid, they are to be part of the event. They are to be part to witness the event. Next slide. So the bid documents are subsequently analyzed. Now, after you have uh, done all the, the opening, I mean, it's at a meeting, now the bids are now given to experts to analyze. Now, when you're talking of analysis, let me give you, I mean, let me tell what goes on. There has been instances, you check for arithmetical errors. Sometimes, there are people, you know, people can be trickish. If we quote the unit prices, each pencil is costing five naira. 20 pencil will cost 100 naira. Is that not so? Now, but because he knows, and that person may be quoting 100 naira, you now say, five times 20 is equal to 80. So when you're announcing, you say he has quoted 80 naira. So he's the one that is winning. Now, you give the project to him at it. Now, when he now comes, you say, I look at what I said. Each pencil is five naira. Did I not write it? So your 80 will only get you how many? 16, not the 20. You now be again. I say, no, it's not everybody can make a mistake. So you have to look at it to be sure there's no arithmetical error. So, I mean, this, uh, so you check it in the evaluation. It's part of the things to check. Also, sometimes a bid may look normal. A tender may look normal, but there's a serious uh, issue there. For example, you discover that everybody is quoting for that particular project, everybody is quoting 50 million naira. Some people are quoting 51, some are quoting 48, and he quoted 49, which is within the range. But when you look at it, you discover that he has said, I mean, he quoted some normal prices, then for some items, he said he will quote, I mean, he quoted overboard. Something that sells for 4,000, he quoted 10,000. He now went and reduced another thing that we sell for uh, 50,000, he quoted 20,000. Do you get the anomaly? One is excessively high, one is excessively low. You know what happens? If you give it to him, he will say you should pay him for him that is high. The one that is will say cannot do it again, remove it from the... <laughs> I do get the trick. So when you are checking, you now look at the reasonableness of the prices, item by item, so that tomorrow we know, okay, at the, the, that one, I don't have, I cannot get it. I don't have the capacity to do it again, which is because you're paying for what he has done. And once you sign the contract, you have agreed to the price. So you now pay him, but the one that is left, you cannot get it done at that price. So you look at it, so that where is quoted an unreasonable price for an item, you know is up to some tricks. So those are the things you look out for when you are evaluating a bid. So even in public, uh, in public procurement, they don't ask you to give it to the lowest bidder. They call it lowest evaluated bid. That is, having checked all those factors, the one that still remains the lowest. That is the one that wins. Not just because the figure up front is small. When you look at the details, it may not really be that small. 
in some cases, some may deliberately omit some items. He may omit some items. And he will pretend as if he didn't know. So when you not give it to him, and we now say, you know, it's not part of what I quoted for. So if you are going to do that, you pay me extra. So you now say, eh, but can you? And when you bring out the paper, it's not there. So those, and if it is a, a big omission, that is enough to disqualify that bidder because he's a fraudulent man. So the requirement, so the technical committee is set up, that is those who are familiar with the, like for example, if it's a building project, it has to be either an architect or an engineer that will be able to relate to what he's talking about. If it's an equipment, it has to be somebody who's familiar with it so that you can spot the anomaly on time. So the requirements specified in the advertisement form the basis for the evaluation. Of course, you first look at all the things you say they should do. If it does not comply to instructions, they likely will not listen to you when it starts executing it. So then those other details. So the contract is eventually awarded to the least responsive tender. So we call it least responsive. That is the one that has responded to all the issues. He has been, he has complied with all the requirements and is still the least. But for somebody who did not comply and he pretended to be the least, then you disqualify him because he will create problems subsequently. Next. Tenders board approval. So having done the evaluation, there's a tenders board that sits to now award it. And what the tenders board does, they look at the evaluation report. They look at the, all the factors and the, by the procurement act in the public institutions in Nigeria today is the chief executive of that institution that is for the university is the vice chancellor that has it. But in the private, like I, I mean, I put in my profile, I'm familiar with the private uh, university also because the uh, precious cornerstone university have been part of it even from the planning stage. I was part of the planning committee and by the grace of God since that I've been part of the council. I've been a member of council. So I am familiar with both terrain. And my recommendation in the case of the private institution, the chairman of the tenders board should be the chairman of council, the pro chancellor. So the tenders board constitutes to undertake award of conduct in public institution, okay. In the private university, the chairman of council should be in chair. In the public institution also, the chairman of council used to be the chairman of the project committee of council. But it was the procurement when they discovered that most of these chairmen are politicians and most times they can't do anything with them. If they misbehave, they have nothing at stake. They just go away. Now say, the chief executive has much at stake. He has his career at stake. He has his reputation at stake. Let him chair it so that if he misbehaves, I mean, that won't be afraid to misbehave. Unlike politicians, they don't care. That's what informs the public uh, issue. But for the private, at least somebody we don't trust, we don't put him as chairman. Sometimes it's for them. You put him as chairman just for political balancing, not because you see any special uh, quality in the person. So other members should be. Next slide. Well, these are just my own thoughts, which is based on experience and, uh, and other issues. Members of the management, that is the VC, all the members of the management, the VC, the DVCs, the registrar, the bursar, the, uh, the university Liberia, the council representatives. That we one or two, I mean, let me two or three representatives of council in that, uh, in that board. The head of the works of physical planning. Because when you are considering works so that they can contribute professionally, the head of audit, the head of the legal unit should be there also. And because so that if you are breaking the law, you can be cautioned right from that state. The head of procurement serves as a secretary. 
So the procurement, so that you can be sure you are following the procurement rules and it keeps all the records also. Next. So, having done the award, that is the, uh, the, the board, so next thing is to issue the letter of award. Of course, the, in some institutions, is the registrar that signs the letter of award. But in public institutions, by virtue of the Procurement Act, is the, I mean, of course, they should have the director of procurement that issues the letter. But we can decide what is most convenient for us that is, uh, that is in harmony with the other, I mean, with a general culture. So the head of procurement issues a letter of award to a successful bidder. The terms of the award are clearly spelled out in the letter. That is the name of the project, the scope of work, the contrast sum, completion period, other requirements. For example, if you are giving advance payment, how much? In the public, I mean, in the public, uh, in Nigeria, the federal government, the maximum you can give to a local contractor now is 30%. If it's a foreign contractor, the maximum is 15%. That's as advance payment of the contract. So, of course, that can vary because we know the person we deal with better. Then that is stated in the letter of award. <coughs> and after that, the contractor must accept in writing because it's an offer. And offer and acceptance, there's no contract except until the offer is accepted. So the contractor, accepts. then after accepting it, then you do a contract agreement. A contract agreement is usually part of the bidding document. They just sign it. And that's the execution of the contract. So they, they execute the contract, the contractor, signs, the client signs, and the VC or whoever assigns to sign. I mean, you, I, I sign because I represent the VC. I sign on behalf of the VC for the contracts. Next, project implementation. After contract award, the contractor is handed over to the project management team. So, having signed the contract, the contract is already in place, so the contractor now is the whoever, if it is construction, whoever has that, it is director of physical planning or what, as the case may be, whatever name we call him, is the one he shows the contractor the site and gives him all the project documents that are relevant, the drawings and all that, that are warehoused with him. So the Procurement unit, of course, if it's purchasing uh, contract, the procurement unit handles that. You want to buy equipment, you want to buy things. Next, project documentation. How many minutes do I have left? Eh? Indefinite. Eh? It's finished. Okay. Maybe I should. So, there are some documents that are really very, very important for any project to succeed that must be in place. And this is what I was talking about. Just next slide. Next slide. Okay, yes, no. Go back. So, if it's a BG, all these documents should be there. I think you can read them up. They're just listed. Next slide. 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 Just keep on. So I think we can read those things up. Thank you very much, sir. We are very thankful, and um, your exposition shows your wealth of experience, and we have gained a lot. Um, few questions from the online audience, which we we'll just um, want you to just use like 
a minute or two to respond to all of them in summary. One is asking, how do you calculate the consultancy fee of a contract? Number two, how do we determine the prices on procurement? Or does procurement as a standard rule, spelling out stamp duty, withholding tax, VAT, and the markup in determining what to charge on any good? I think you've discussed that with us. Please, I want you to make available the soft copy of your presentation in PDF from an online listener. Is it ethical? or permissible to make calls to a bidder where there is ambiguity on his bid to get clarity instead of outright voiding of such bid. Please, who is in charge to issue store requisition voucher? Is it procurement or store? So these are just a few um, questions. Kindly help us with um, the answers to this just in two minutes, sir. Now, you see, these are interesting questions. First, it's talking about consultancy fee. How do you calculate it? Now, the before and um, before is not many years ago. For construction. That's a standard approved by the federal government, I mean, that you use to calculate the fees. I mean, for an architect, for an engineer, and all that is in the federal government approved scale of fees. But now, with the Procurement Act, I'm talking of the public sector. I will now relate it to the private sector. Now, what the government has done is not to fix the fee for a project, because with the percentage, it doesn't matter who does it, you will always get the same answer, regardless of who the architect is. But now, it's not like that. Now, what the government has done with the Procurement Act is that the, uh, each person that have been involved, they fix the value, the salary. For example, they call it man month rate. If you are an engineer, qualified engineer with 15 years experience, and you are involved in that project for two months. So what you expect is that's a rate the federal government has approved. You now use it to multiply the 15 months that are going to be on the project. That will be your fee. Then if there is any equipment, maybe you are going to hire a particular equipment, you are going to hire an, maybe an aeroplane for you to do some survey, we are going to hire uh, whatever. It's a drone. So all the equipment you are going to use, you stay them and how much it will cost. You now sum it up as the cost of that consultancy work. You cost your time and the equipment. That's, the, that, that's how the fee is arrived at now. So that's how if the person, so it costs his fee. That if I will do this, I will put in maybe 50 hours. So, and what is the rate per hour? Just multiply it by that 50 hours. That would be the fee. Then, these are the equipment I will need to do it. Then, there's what we call reimbursables also, maybe like stationary and all that. So, by the time you now sum this up, that is the fee for that particular project consultancy. Then, it talks about the price of procurement. Now, when I talked about the withholding tax, it's, it's not open to you. It's fixed by government. VAT is fixed by government. So you are not the one that will determine how much you want to pay. The stamp duty is compulsory. is fixed by government. So all those things there. And if an institution, for example, if I work for the for Anchor University now, and I don't, you didn't deduct the tax, maybe you like me, and you just, by the time they come from FRS, the institution will pay. You will pay over what I've collected. 
So it's better you charge me and deduct it so that when you are remitting it, you are not. Uh, uh, so if you, you just deceive yourself, ah, the price is five million naira, and tax is not there, you are still going to pay the tax. When FRS visit you, they will calculate it, and you pay them. You will pay the stamp duty. You will pay the VAT. All of them you will pay it. So if you don't deduct it from the money of the contractor, you will still pay by the time the, uh, uh, the law enforcement agent comes. Because it's a law of the land. It's not a thing that you negotiate. As an institution, except it's not on record that that particular transaction happens. Because when they come, they call for your vouchers and see how you have disbursed. So I think uh, <laughs> this man knows a lot about it. <laughs> he knows a lot about what I'm talking about. So they look at your voucher and they will just pick it. And this Ajibola that did this for you, where's the money? Where's the tax that you deducted? You are not saying we didn't deduct tax. Ah, well, it means I've decided to pay it. So that's how that happens. Now, when you're talking of calling a bidder to correct an anomaly, it depends. It depends. There's some things we call minor errors. And there are some that are major. If it is major, it stands disqualified. But if it's minor, you can call him so that he, will, he can correct it. So it's, uh, it depends on the nature of the error. Then the store requisition voucher. Now, by the function of the uh, procurement, store is actually part of the procurement unit. The store is part of the procurement unit. So the store officer, technically speaking, technically speaking, is the staff of the procurement unit. So I think that answers the question. Thank you very much, sir. I also believe that the request of one of our online audience to make the slides available online will be met. Thank you very much. I think the next on our agenda is for us to have a short break of 20 minutes and um, we are going to be provided refreshments. So um, kindly be patient. We appreciate um, your audience, your patience. God bless you. I also want to Okay, uh, yeah, just a um, little modification. Um, we are going to be taking a group photograph. Yes, and um, permit me to quickly recognize the presence of the Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Ayola. Thank you very much. And um, the correct pronunciation of the chairman of ICANN Ali Mosho District, ICANN President Ali Mosho District is Mr. Olushola Owo Yele. Chairman, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we need to take the group photograph. Um, the, regi the registrar, the bossa, the chairman, ICANN President, and our facilitators will step forward. Chairman, okay, sorry. Chairman, I can't district. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Okay, heads of the, after this group photograph, then the heads of the department will join.
Please, unit heads or department and departmental heads, get ready. Okay, the deans first. The deans, I thought they are. I can represent it in Valley Moshore District with the deans. Yes, deans now, yes. With the deans. Thank you. The departmental heads and unit heads. No, no, departmental heads and unit heads. Then thereafter, everybody. Mr. Aliadi, please join us. <laughs> unit heads, departmental heads, please. Thank you, everyone. We are very grateful. So we have a short break of 15 minutes because we have used five minutes for the group photograph. So please, um, please um, kindly wait because of the refreshments and the uh, is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Alco University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in the school, you can choose from any of our programs the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Medical and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any value courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage.
The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in school, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this flight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in school, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this flight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in school, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this flight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in school, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this flight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 
160 UTM score, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your tickets for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM score, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment. With excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers, you don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your tickets for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM score, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your tickets for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM score, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your tickets for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM score, you can choose from any of our programs at the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environmental Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. 
You can also choose from any value courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, university is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with 
excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anchor, Anchor university, university is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabal Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabal Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabal Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabal Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. 
we don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late. To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 on the graduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anchor, Anchor University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environment and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabon Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 on the graduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anchor, Anchor University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management and Social Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabon Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 on the graduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anchor, Anchor university, university is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environment and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayabon Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 on the graduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anchor, Anchor University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Environment, Social and Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose Good afternoon, everyone. Like you are all welcome to the continuation of this workshop. Once again, the theme is budgetary control and procurement relevance in the 21st century. We'll be starting in a minute's time. Kindly let's have our seat and be settled, both the physical and the online audience.
which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this flight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 on the graduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anchor, Anchor University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like nursing science, architecture, public health, law, environmental management and toxicology, or medical lab science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment. Okay, um, it's time to start, and what we have here is item number nine, the third presentation, titled Budget Monitoring Technique in our 21st Century. It will be handled by the substantive bossa himself, Dr. Ojo Ayodele Fanero, but before he comes to the podium, just permit me to read to you a few things about the bossa. Dr. Ayodele Ojo Fanero is the substantive bossa of Angkor University from 1st of July 2022. He, bags, he bagged a degree in BSc Economics from the University of Ibadan. Ibadan. Also, a BSc in accounting from the Ohio State University. He also possesses an MSc in economics from the University of from the Oba Femi Awolowo University. He is a fellow of the prestigious Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria. He is a certified public financial accountant, UK. He holds an honorary de doctoral degree from London Graduate School, UK. And he has been, he was formerly the acting director of Audit University of Ibadan. Ibadan. Can you kindly honor him as he comes to the pulpit podium to give his Lecture on budgeting monitoring technique in our 21st century. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. The Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, my deans of faculties my heads of departments, the, press, the chairman of ICANN in this uh, district, and his uh, counterparts who are executive members that are here present, my colleagues in the office. I'm here this afternoon to present on budget and budgetary control in our 21st century. In my scope of discussions, we want to look at the objectives. We want to also look at some terminologies in my introduction. We we'll look at some budget terms. Then we we'll look at overview of budgetary process. Then number five, we consider the need for the unified chart of accounts for budgeting and accounting system. 
Then we zero it down to looking at our university chart of account structure for budgeting and format for application. Then we want to look at steps for budgeting with the university chart of accounts. And finally, we look at the challenges, issues, and budget monitoring techniques. The objective of this paper is we want to look at the use of chart of accounting, chart of account for our budgeting. And um, I'll be using examples so that we can um, uh, understand uh, where I'm actually going. When I came to Angkor University and um, we were trying to prepare the budget. My colleagues in the office, in fact, they have done wonderfully. They have done excellently. So, but even when I told some of my colleagues, the HODs had prepared their budget, and we said, okay, let us now summarize them. In the process of trying to summarize, and interestingly, we just employed some people. I said, I put them through. I said, please go ahead. They now saw stationery somewhere. Another one, stationery and printing. Another one, stationery, printing, and uh, one other thing. So they were now asking me, where do we put this one? Where do we put stationery? Where do we put stationery and printing? Where do we put stationery, printing, and, uh, food and uh, all some other thing? Then, I now told them, yes, there is no way you want to prepare your budget and you will not come across this kind of a problem. And that is spelling out the need for a chart of account. So that's the objective. There is need for a chart of account so that it's easy to marry departments together. It becomes a cumbersome thing when we become so many or when we have to plan for the country. If we have to plan for the whole country, all the states in Nigeria, all the, the, all the different local governments, all the very the parastatas in each local government, and there are no chart of account. That accountant will die of headache. Because he will be look struggling to classify them one by one, one by one. Maybe in the process of that, that's where he will, he will just lump one day. So that's the reason why there should be a chart of account. So we need to have a unified chart of account for budgeting and for accounting system. Then again, we want to look at how to integrate the structure of chart of accounts into budgeting. Then again, we look at what is budget cycle. How does budget look like from the beginning to the end? Then we look at the functions of budget classification. Why, why do we need to classify budget into different classifications? Then we talk about the steps for budgeting with chart of account. Now, I want to ask a few questions so that it's going to be a little bit participative. In this hour, 21st century. Next slide, please. In this our 21st century, is an age that is characterized with so many things. This 21st century. Can you please uh, tell me one or two of the characteristics of this 21st century? Yes, anybody? Pardon? Thank you very much. Advance technology. If you sit down with your children at home, 13, 14, 
and they pick your phone. So many things that you don't even know can, your phone can be used for. Eh? Your children are already performing it. One day, I was chatting, I was discussing with a father. He said, these children, <laughs> they can sell us <laughs> without knowing. That's the age in which we are. Age of technology. See? What other thing can we say is the characteristic of this, our 21st century? Yes? Anybody? It's a digital age. It's a digital age. It's an age of creativity. It's an age of critical thinking. You see, you see that, for instance, somebody can be on his laptop here in Nigeria and can be working right in USA and can earn salary from USA and get his money faster than somebody working in Angkor University. He is on his table or in his, in his, in his, in his room in the, host, in the hostel. And he is doing a data entry job in USA. And it's just one hour. He's putting him per day. And believe you me, immediately he's finishing his account, his, memorand, his uh, remuneration has been computed and sent and he receives in the next one hour. Where in our own system here, we are still battling. Even after a whole month, we are still battling with how to pay the salary of an individual. You see, what is helping them over there? These are some of the things. That's the reason why we are looking at our own saint, our own age can no longer accommodate the old method of budgeting. It can no longer accommodate the old method of thinking. The age in which we are can no longer accommodate the delay, the protocols, and all those things that makes almost people to get frustrated. So we have to quickly come up with modern ideas so as to move our institutions forward. So we have to consider the age in which we are, the 21st century age, and we have to move in the light of the age in which we are to make sure that we have a budgeting system that is working effectively. So that's the reason why classification code as a system for budget cannot be emphasized in this our age. In this age of technology, in this age that is digital driven, when transactions can move from US to Nigeria in the speed of a second. And we now just continue to depend on the manual approach with which we were trained up as accountants. But with the manual approach which we were trained up, um, I'm talking to HODs and things. So, you see, this uh, seminar, you may not know the value now. It is when you suddenly find yourself to become a vice chancellor. When you suddenly find yourself. You become a vice chancellor. You are an HOD now, or you are a dean. When you just suddenly see yourself as the chief accounting officer of an organization. You see? So that is the reason why we need to pay close attention. There is need for us to be to achieve transparency. There is need to achieve accountability and performance evaluation. And that cannot be easily done without a chart of account. Cannot be easily done. 
you will compare apple with apple, not apple with orange. So, but if they are not clearly stated, I, I'm following a chart of account, it is not going to be as easy as we think. So that's the objective. Now let's look at some budget terms. What is exactly his budget? Budget means a projected outlay of revenue during the next financial year. Interestingly, in Angkor University, we are finishing 2021-22 by the last day of August. And by 1st September 2022, we start another financial year. And we'll be defending our budget any time from now. And that's the reason why this lecture is coming up. So that we will know. And I've gone through the uh, budget prepared by HODs. Almost all of them. There is no revenue there. There is no allocation. So everybody is just talking about how to spend, how to spend, how to spend. But what do you want to spend? Where do you get where what you want to spend? Where is the revenue allocation? Where is it? You want to spend, but what are you going to spend? So we have bogus expenditure. But where is the money going to come from? That's the reason why we are going through this. There should be a chart of account for expenditure. There should be a chart of account for allocation. Just as we have in the federal system, in the state system, there's the renewal allocation at the beginning of the year. So each knows what he's going to spend. It's on the basis of that that we now plan our expenditure. So that is budget. And what is budgeting? It's the process of formulating and implementing budgets. So what is budgetary control? In budgetary control, what we are doing is to measure the performance. We want to know whether our budget is deficit or it is surplus. We compare actual with budgeted. So we want to know whether it is a surplus budget or it is a deficit budget. So that's the purpose of budgetary control. Next slide. Budget terms. When we talk about chart of account, it is, a, it is a process of assigning a symbol, particularly figures, 001, 002, and all the like. It's because computer can easily read the figures, especially when they become very large. So it's easy for computer to recognize uh, codes and analyze. So we don't have to be using manual approach when it comes to analysis. I want to, dis I want to detect when the, the, the data is very large, which I believe one day Anchor University will get there. So we want to plan ahead of time and have a chart of account now so that when we become so large, and we have satellite campuses in UK, US, in Nigeria, in different states, in different parts of the world, satellite campuses, and in each of those campuses, they are bringing in revenue, they have a percentage How do we code them? How do we prepare the account? At the end of the day, that's the reason why we need to have chart of accounts. Budget cost center, that is where cost is recognized. It is known in all uh, uh, departments that we have cost center, we have revenue center. In the revenue center, you may, in a cost center, you may not be generating revenue. In a cost center, you may not be making money. But you are part of the department, you are part of the organization, but you may not be generating a revenue. But we are very effective and very useful to the system. Whereas there are others that are costs, that are revenue centers, generating revenue. And in our institution here, we have the various departments, academic departments, where students are being admitted. That's where we generate revenue. So those are the revenue centers. The cost centers, it may be works and maintenance, you may not be generating revenue, but there is added value.
value to the system. The bursary may not be generating direct revenue, but there is added value to the system. And that's part of the added values what we're doing now. So that's the difference between a cost center and a revenue center. Now, what is budget cycle? It is the period between one budget time and another budget time. When we talk about budget, budget execution, you know, after we have uh, um, prepared our budget, there is budget preparation, but there is also budget execution. That's when we bring what we have planned into operation. That's budget execution. So, what is budget planning? That is when the HOD, is, the HOD comes with its members and says, okay, for instance, now we have sent memos out, I think about three weeks ago now, or two weeks, we asked that each department should prepare their budget. So, interestingly, not all are submitted. So, many are yet to submit. So at that level, that's preparation. And we expect each HOD or dean to sit down and with the uh, management of the department and say, what, are, what should be our budget for next year? So that's budget preparation. Then it comes to the budget cycle. Overview of what exactly happens when we talk about budgeting. We have what is called budget preparation. And what we are doing now is part of budget preparation. We are trying to know what we are expected to do. So it's part of budget preparation. So after we sit down as HOD with our key management members in the department, and we draw out the uh, budget. And what should guide us? our objectives, the vision, and the mission of the institution. Those are the things that will guide us. Because those things must align with the vision and mission of the institution. If you are preparing your own budget, it's not aligning with the vision and with the mission of the institution. It may not be approved. Then the next stage is execution. And then after that, we have reporting, we have management of those, uh, of the budget. We analyze, we report. Like the last council meeting, interestingly, I just came and I had a council be meeting. I said, wow, I, with both night and day, we were trying to evaluate. We worked day and night. People didn't understand. What will both will be doing and they will be staying in the cafeteria day and night, day and night. Sometimes I get to my room around 12 p.m. in the night. What are they doing? What's happening? We were trying to do an evaluation of the budget. So, and good enough, we were able to finish and we presented to the council. You see, we are able to see the variances, where there is surplus, where there is deficit. We were able to analyze our debtors. We were able to see how much is being owned, how much are people are owing us from each department. We saw everything clearly. We analyzed everything on departmental basis, on level basis. How much are they owing us in this level? So we were able to analyze that. We were able to analyze our creditors. How much are we owing? You see? So that is at the financial management and reporting stage. So, go to the next slide. Functions of budget classification. Why is it that we need to do budget classification? Number one is to agree with legal structure. There is a legal instrument that as to how budget should be. It must align with law, what the law says. So we are aligning with what the law says. So, and so we must prepare. Nigeria has a chart of account that all institutions are to follow. So when I was in College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, 
Interestingly, you know, I told some of my colleagues when I come to the office, we were, we were in a budget committee. The financial controller was the chairman. I was the assistant. So, but <laughs> all of a sudden, the provost just called me one day and said, Mr. Fanino, from now, you will anchor the budget. And I was an auditor. I wasn't a, 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 a financial, I wasn't the financial controller. And he said, from now, you will anchor the budget of the entire college. And I took it up. So we are lying with the legal structure because we had to follow, the first place to start was to follow the chart of account of the federal government, what the law says. Because at the end of the day, if we don't follow that chart, number one, it will be difficult for us to prepare an account that will follow that same chart. And if we cannot prepare an, alarm, an account that follow that chart, uh, when we report, when our financial statement is submitted to the federal government, there will be, there will be conflict with what the standard said we should comply with. So that is why with budget classification is very important. Two, it enables multidimensional budget analysis. We have various departments, like where I'm coming from, about 200 departments. And then the chart of income alone, you know, is running to about 500 sources of revenue. These, the expenditure items run into about 600. Now, tell me how you want to manually do that without a chart of account. Tell me how you want to do that, how you want to marry them together. How you, marry, you want to marry all the departments together. If you don't follow the chart of account. The boss of that institution, I pity him so much. Any institution, that is as big as that, and is not having the chartered account, and is not following charge chartered account, that boss is in trouble. The financial controller there is in trouble. God, how is he going to do it? In this age, so gone are the days when business was very small, and transactions were very small. You could treat them anyhow. You can analyze this thing yourself. But these days, it's no longer possible. That is why, because of multi-dimensions in budget analysis. We must follow a chart of account. Again, the basis for budget management and execution. Budget can only be managed effectively, executed effectively when there is a chart of account. The need for unified chart of account for budgeting and accounting is important, one, for fiscal management. For fiscal management. The need to manage revenue and expenditure in real time. In my college where I'm coming from, I just log in into the fees into fees income. On immediately the money is dropping, almost on weekly basis. I log in, I download, I analyze, and I departmentalize them. And we apply the ratios that we go to each department to them. And I forward it to the provost. On real time. Almost real time. Because each art is own allocation. There is a percentage for each department. There is a percentage for stationery. There is a percentage for um, uh, refreshment. There is percentage for, uh, for, for, for uh, whatever, all those little expenses, expense, examination. There is a percentage for that. So immediately the money is coming. I download, I analyze, and I apply the ratios, and I distribute them straight. So when you exhaust the previous money allocated to you, you get another one based on the allocation. So if you had a, if your 
expenditure was far, far more than your revenue before. Now you have gotten a real allocation, you can still implement some. But if there is no chart of account, how can that be done? If the payments are not coded, how will that be easily done? Again, operational management. There is need to track commitment and expenditures during budget execution as compared to budget. There is need for us to evaluate what has been executed. When you carry out your expenditure, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we must be able to analyze. What is happening in most institutions is that they budget at the beginning of the year and they submit. And that's the end. So everybody just begin to spend anything that comes. Anything that comes. You just keep on spending. Keep on spending. Keep on spending. It is until the end of the year now. They now evaluate. They now discover. But you know they have that luxury of getting grants from government. They have that luxury of getting a third fund, this one, even the salaries are being paid. That cannot happen. That is not possible here in the private sector. So that is the reason why, because we must be able to marry our, expend, our revenue and expenditure on daily basis. On daily basis. Immediately you spend, in fact, at the beginning of the year, you be given an allocation based on what the, uh, the POM has agreed upon. After going, to, it's not just arbitrary, uh, uh, arbitrary figure. It's based on analysis of all the previous accounts. So we are able to recommend to management that this is the ratio that may be workable. So we allocate based on the ratio. So each individual has his own allocation. And it will be, when I came, the first thing I did was to look at the bank statement. And I, all the bank accounts, I opened them, and then we are able to, the balances in the account, we are able to itemize them together, and the total sum of everything. And I've, our, my colleagues in the office, like I said, they did excellently. They, in fact, he prepared his handing over note, all those balances were there. So they gave me everything. All I did need was to sum, sum them together, find out if there are unprecedented checks. And since there were no unprecedented checks, so I could look, so I just used that balance and I entered, I opened a vote book. It, immediately, I opened a vote book. What are the expenses coming regularly now? I saw accreditation, money coming in for accreditation, expenditure on accreditation. So I quickly, when com money comes in, I quickly allocate to, allocate to uh, accreditation. Others that I cannot spell out, I put them as others. So I started with accreditation and others. So when money comes in for, uh, for accreditation, I put them there. Any, any voucher that comes in and we spend out of uh, 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 accreditation, I quickly deduct. I give the balance again. So that I don't exceed allocation for accreditation. Others also, I put them there. So I put, once we spend, each payment we make, I'll take one, i put it under others, I deduct the balance so that I don't exceed. So at every point in time, was monitoring. When I saw others, other coming in, like top, uh, top up uh, program, I said, eh, ah, so you are, okay, I allocate there also. Then I put the revenue that come in, I put it there. Any payment voucher that comes in that want to pay, I put it under, I deduct. The balance is left there. Okay, we saw pay. When I came, pay, uh, pay as you hand, they have been owing. But I want to, I'm happy to tell you that I paid two months when I came. February and April. Am I correct? Thank you. I've paid two months. They had been accumulating. And immediately, I just opened open my vote book, put it there, deduct, and then left the balance. 
I saw that the PFAs, they have not been paying for a long time. I'm happy to inform you that I've paid that of June by God's grace. All I did was allocate, deduct, allocate, deduct, so that at any point in time, I know what is the balance in this account, the balance in this account. So that has helped a lot because I quickly did a little classification. If there were no classification, we just spend from out of the out of the pool. You find it difficult to analyze. You don't know which account has been exhausted. You won't know. Everything will just be lob, lob, lob it. You will just be muddled up. So that is the reason why there is need for classification. And then it, our financial reports, I mean, whether IFRS or uh, IPSAS, everything is expected to be, we are expected to be able to show outcome and compare budget. So finally, it is for transparency and accountability. Of course, we want to, we want to be transparent. We want to be able to show those revenues. We want to be able to report them at the end of the day. We want to be able to show those expenditures and report them at the end of the day. Now, we come to chart of account structure. We have administrative segment, economic segment, and functional segment in the chart of account. When we talk of administrative segment in our chart of account, we are talking of something like a faculty, something like a department. So that is the administrative uh, segment. Then when we talk of economic segment, we are talking of something like salaries, goods and services, and all those uh, items. Those are economic segments. But when we talk of functional segment, we are talking of, I mean, in, we are talking in terms of uh, outlays. Like for instance, we talk of different functions, we saw different functions in the organization. So take for instance, accreditation. That's a function. Take for instance, uh, um, accommodation. Take for instance, uh, uh, student registration. Those are functions. So we can have functional segments like that. Then program segments. The program classification can be, yes, also this one also program, program. The program, accreditation is a program, registration is a program, examination is a program. So there could be student enrollment. So then fund segments. Fund classification identifies sources of fund in an organization in this institution, the major one is fees, And the next one is maybe grants, subvention from our mother church. So apart from that, the, one, the others are just coming in triplets. So maybe transcript, people pay for this one or that, a small, small in triplets. Then we have uh, geographical segments. That's when maybe we have a branch of Anchor, in US, in UK, we have a satellite campus. So that is what is called geogra geographical segment. Now, what are the steps of budgeting? With institutions chart of account. All the segments of the chart of account must be completed in our budget entries. So, like for uh, Anchor University, you see, the revenues are not much. It's most often from school fees and then allocations or uh, donations. So, not much. But what we are trying to do is to put in allocation. And when we are doing allocation, we try to look at what are we allocating for. Allocation for maybe uh, salaries, that one, allocation for this, allocation for that. So we have that revenue, it becomes an allocation when it gets to the department. It's an allocation. Then we have also items of expenditure. So that is what we are trying to do. So then the next thing is we identify the cost and revenue centers. Next chart, 
identify the economic items that will be executed during the fiscal year. What are those economic items? We need to identify them. Then identify the functions intended to be performed by the institution in our various revenue and cost centers. Then identify the program items intended to be carried out by, our, by the institution. For instance, in Ancon University, we want to have law department now. In fact, it's on top gear. Architecture. See? Laboratory technology. So, those are new programs. And we know those things, with, those ones with gov money. So, we'll be looking for money for accreditation. We'll be looking for new, uh, new staff to be employed. So, HOD, new HOD, we, like we've just had this morning when the VCA announced the dean of the postgraduate college. So, that's cost. So, those things we have to plan for. Then we determine the sources of financing the budget amount for each budget line. We have budget line, and we must know how do we finance this budget line. Then we identify the plan location of the economic transaction for the institution. Integrating institutions chart of account structure for budgeting. Next slide, please. Here we need to categorize, like I had here mentioned. We have to categorize into administrative segments, economic segment, functional segment, program segment, form segment, and geographical segment. So for, for us in Akron University, all these segments are not yet involved. For instance, we don't, yet, we are, we don't have a salary campus yet. So that may not be relevant. But for big institutions with satellite campuses, that will be very important. Then revenue expenditure. We need to determine the chart of account for revenue. We need to determine the chart of account for expenditure. And then we need to classify the functions. The functions. Then we need to, uh, to determine um, who are our donors. So some of the things here are peculiar to those in the government institutions, like classification of functions of government, or we need to know the term, things that needed to be that government at, that, that, that the government has stipulated that we must conform with. Then they, we have to come up with a code. That's where we are going. After we have designed all these things, we must come up with a code that we are going to use. So we have to derive those codes and we have to put those codes there. When I came, all I did is exactly what they were using, which established so that uh, it will be a little bit understandable and to not uh, uh, collapse. So I just followed exactly the code that the, 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 what the, the, the way, same way they arrange the departments. I say we arrange it. The way, same way they arrange the expenses. That's the, though there are better ways of classifying them. But let me start from there. So vice chancellor is number one. DVC number two. Number three is uh, registry. Number four is bursary. Abi. Uh -huh. So I followed for those departments like that. Then for the code for. The, so I call them one zero zero one zero zero two zero zero and on and on like that. Then for the expenses and the revenues, we, we follow exactly what they have in structure, so that we can take off. Format for annual budget with chart of accounts. There should be chart for revenue budget, chart for the current budget, chart for capital budget. So then, what are the challenges and issues? with this budget classification. Designing the chart of account for budget classification, the coding. Sometimes some people don't want a change. So we are already used to this kind of, just prepare budget at the middle of the year, and nothing goes on during the year. And at the end of the year now, we are now waiting to do performance evaluation. Well, that may not work in our age again. 
That may not work. So, um, the challenges are that people don't want change. They want to sit down at the comfort zone and uh, no hardship, nothing stressing them. But when we sat down and we started seeing how to prepare a vote book, how to have a revenue allocation at the beginning of the session, and when you bring in a voucher, uh, we will subject it to what you have as your allocation. And it's not even sufficient that we have money in your account. You want to know the code that this thing belongs to. I want to find out is that money in that, in that code. If there is no money in there, we will not process that voucher. We are saying this so that we will know ahead of time. So that there will, will, not, be, will not be fighting us when we start. See, that's why, that, in fact, that's the main aim and the main objective of this workshop is to carry you, my heads of department, to carry you along, my days, to carry you a fighting busdry. When you submit uh, and we say, no, this cannot fly. Because once there is no money, there is no money. And we can't fight ourselves. Rather than we should all look out for money. It's like a father and a mother at home. So that's... If the, the mother is fighting her daddy, where there is no food at home, will that fighting bring the money? <laughs> or daddy came home and said, where is my food? But when he, before he left, he didn't put money down. So when he came home, he's not asking for food. Uh, tell me what the mother is likely to say. <laughs> Can anybody just tell me something there? Eh? Ma? You say, eh, hey, there's no food, there's no money. <laughs> yeah, it's as simple as that. <laughs> you didn't put money down. So, <laughs> so, we cannot be fighting ourselves. All we need to do, that's why, you know, the VC, you know, in fact, if I can tell you something that I am, I am happy being here. I have a VC that is self-driven, motivated, highly motivated, and is driving towards the right direction. You see the rigor, the rate at which is pursuing accreditation. That is where the solution is. And every couple now is committed to accreditation, not touching it, and I'm religiously following it. Any cover that is not related to accreditation and you send in your voucher, I will say, please, even my own car, official car, allocated to me when I came. It had no battery. And uh, I submitted invoice. It came to my table. Of course, <laughs> you must not be sentimental. I did not approve it. Because there is no money to do it. I had to use my personal money to go and buy the battery. It has been approved. I know it will be paid. And eventually, now it has been paid. So, that is it. That is it. So, complex many digits. You know, it involves multiple decisions by staff coding transactions. And it's not feasible for impl to implement with manual. Many of us are used to manual, uh, manual ways of doing things. So when we are asking you to follow a code, you are wondering what code for. Well, let's just write it anyhow. You go and be doing that yourself. But what's difficult in we giving you code? for stationery. Put the code and put stationery there. There is another code for printing. You put the code, you put the printing. And you make your budget to follow that same. It makes job so easy. So we can easily analyze. I can run my Excel. You know, I can run my Excel and compare 
for one for stationaries for all departments in the university and come up with a figure. I can run my Excel for all printing and come up with a figure and derive total easily. So that is the reason why we need to follow the chart of accounts. Using independent codes may increase workload. No, it doesn't increase workload. It makes job easier. But the people's uh, people will be thinking, ah, if I have to be using code, that will be wasting me my time. Please, I am not an accountant. Go and do it yourself. Please, I'm begging you, my HODs and my DNs. Please, just cooperate with us. And I know God will help us. We will move forward. So please, I'm appealing to you, and I'm begging you, please cooperate with us. Anchor University will move forward. And we shall make progress. Challenges and issues. Cash-based budget. But cash-based budget is, most budget are prepared on cash basis. But when we want to prepare the financial account following accrual accounting, that may pose a little problem. But there's no problem there. There's no problem there. Then systems to handle integrated budget classification using chart of account. There's no problem there. All you just need is let's cooperate together. Then change management. If there is one thing that I'm enjoying in Anchor University, is that immediately I mentioned this at the POM, it was accepted without a single, nobody opposed it. But in the institution where I was coming from, when I mentioned it, he said, ah, I'm, don't bring in this uh, revenue allocation. No. Don't bring this issue of never new revenue allocation. Ah, go, go, all the problem of a copy commission. That's what you want to bring to the department again. But this thing, immediately I mentioned it, it was unanimously accepted. So we don't have problem with management as far as implementing these. Uh, all we need to do is just train ourselves and then document and then we change. The institutional issues, we still don't have that problem in Nanko, by God's grace. Everything complies with rules and regulations. In fact, they've been preparing budget before I came. So it's no longer new. And they've been doing performance evaluation before I came. So it's no longer new in Nanko University. My conclude. Ladies and gentlemen, that budgetary control cannot be overemphasized. And to be able to do it effectively, we must have a chart of account. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for this wonderful presentation. Budgetary control cannot be overemphasized. And for effective budget control, we must have a good chart of accounts, good accounting uh, coding system. Thank you very much. So we want to use this medium to briefly welcome questions, contributions, observations to what have been said so far. Anybody, both physical and online audience any question on budget on budget monitoring techniques is there any gray area you don't understand that you would like to seek clarification okay thank you thank you sir uh, mr moses anyone else okay Professor Hoyero, thank you. Okay, Mr. Oko. Okay, let me start with uh, Mr. Moses. If the bursary departments is uh, making budget for uh, the 
pension remittance. I want to find out, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, Bosa, for the lecture. Just about maybe one or two issues I want to um, seek for clarification on. Number one has to do with um, the bursary response to request. Just as uh, the bursa said, everything will have to be budgeted for, which is also subject to availability of funds. So he said, if there is any request, and there is no money, there is no money, and there is nothing anybody can do about that. But then, how do we undo issues or matters that cannot wait? Now, let's take, for example, we are going to start the semester examination. And we need examination scripts. We need papers to print and things related to that. Are we going to say um, there is no money and because of that, there is no money? I just need a clarification. There are other issues related to that on things that are very urgent that um, need to be handled immediately. And we have had cases where, let's say in the faculty, because of the urgency of that matter, we say, okay, let's, we call ourselves together, HODs Dean, can we quickly raise money to solve this issue? Because it is something that can't wait. So, if that is done, are we still going to say it can't, even though the problem has been solved, because we know it can't wait? Are we not going to say there's no money and then maybe we never can tell when the money will be refunded back to the people, the staff who have sacrificed or raised that money for something of that, um, of that nature? That's number one, sir. Number two has to do with the issue of. Um, revenue uh, and I think this is very important and I, I hope that uh, the bustry might need to do more to see how to also educate staff both academic and non-academic staff to see how we can be involved more in revenue generation for the university because I do believe that there are some resources that we have in the university that can be deployed um, to commercial purposes that could yield further revenue for the university. Then I also know that in some places, they encourage staff to generate revenue with you know, a, a kind of agreement that, okay, if you can do this, you take 40%. It, it, it's a kind of motivation. And so, because, and so staff are encouraged to initiate programs because they know that if the program is executed, this is what is going to come as a kind of additional income for that staff himself who is um, you know, bringing that idea. And of course, with the institutional support, we know that the percentage is coming to the university and the percentage is going to the staff that brings the idea. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, it's a great one. Yeah, I know this is part of the best practices um, because there have been organizations I'm aware of that 
um, two units, one unit is given something, the other unit is denied that same thing, saying that they don't have money in their own um, accounts. So it's, um, it's a welcome idea. But one thing now, first thing I want to ask is about feedback. I don't know why we don't give feedback to the person who initiated a request or anything. That thing could be approved, and what was approved could be reviewed down, yet there will be no feedback to the person who initiated that request. Preventure, I made the request, um, requesting for 10,000, and by and by, um, 5,000 was approved. I will not be informed. It will just be sent to the bursar, approved so-so amounts. And I will just see that. I think there is need for feedback to the person who initiated any form of um, letter request to know the state, the status. Or it could be that, okay, this thing cannot be treated. It can be entertained. Why? There is no money or enough money in the account to meant for that thing. But the person will not be informed. I, I would like a clarification on that, sir. Then, um, just like we have said, technology is going and things, we are going paperless. Like in this case of um, budgeting, each department have to raise their budgets. I wouldn't know whether the, the Bosri is trying to, maybe like layers with the ICT, um, there could be, um, you know, automated, maybe on the site, each department will enter their own um, budget for each um, item and automatically reflect rather than paper paper imagine the, the volume of paper that will go around for each um, department to do their budget and to do various um, things even the request to the rights there are places that everything has been automated thank you very much thank you very much sir i think the first is on the provision of fund for pension payments staff involvement to generate revenue, things, how things that are urgent are important should be treated even if there are no funds. And the last one, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as to budget for pension remission, by God's grace, we have budget for it now. So and it's being handled centrally. It's being handled centrally. And I've told you that I have paid, by God, not me, <laughs> university has paid for the first time, I think this year, we have paid for June, by God's grace. So we are paid for June, so. Then, um, apart from that, we have paid so the, PF, the PFA, both the 10% uh, that the institution should pay and the 8.5% that individuals that were deducted from individuals account, we have paid for the month of June. So by God's grace. So, and we are going to make remarkable good progress by the grace of God. Then, in addition to that, the payee, which for a long time had not been paid. We have paid for two months, just when I came. We have paid two months. So, and it's the cooperation of the VC, and his drive, which by God's grace has enabled us to do this. Then, Bosley responds to requests. There are matters that cannot wait, like semester exam. Yes, that's the purpose of this deliberation and the purpose of coming together to budget. So there will be the budget defense. So at the budget defense, we have it in mind that there are certain things that we must handle centrally. Like in the institution where I'm coming from, when I was in College of Medicine, I told you I was in charge of budgeting. Centrally, examinations is being handled centrally. Accreditation is handled centrally. And so the fund is provided, but will, may not be released 
until except it is for examination and accreditation. So, by God's grace, we are going to make sure that it takes priority. Anything related to examinations, anything related to accreditation, and some other important things will be given priority, and the money will be set apart, will be kept in the account. And no matter the pressure, we will not touch it. So that's where, that's where we are going, by God's grace. Then, we are talking about, yes, we need papers to print. We know that. Since I'm coming from, um, I'm coming from a university environment, it's not strange to us anymore. We know that there are certain expenses that we cannot do without. So, then revenue. How do we educate staff to generate revenue for the university? See, that's part of it. If we can use a communic from this workshop, eh, we, can issue, we can come together. If I ever have my way, I will just say, okay, let us form um, three groups and we appoint somebody to chair it. And we just quickly deliberate together and come out at the end of the day with a communic. How do we generate revenue for the university? So if I have my way, I want to do that. But my challenge is not even many are here. So, but part of the thing we have by God's grace in mind is to come and we will bring people who are winning research grants. You see, because many of us, we have potentials to be principal investigators. Where I'm coming from, we have principal investigators in charge of those who are into um, um, World Bank, IMF, and they are winning grants there. So, even with this coronavirus, many have won a lot of grants on how to, how to curb coronavirus. A lot of grants that people have won. So we're going to bring experts on that field who will come and teach us on how to write research grants and win grants. So we, are we have all the potentials to become principal investigators. I may I tell you that um, in UI, we have helped many who won grants to prepare their budget. You see? So, and the budget is winsome. So it's winsome, and when eventually they win the grant, you see, it's interesting to tell you that even out of the grants they won, I have enjoyed traveling outside the country, also, through Pacifier Investigator. So, when we, in Angkor University, by God's grace, many of us will be winning research grants. Many of us will become principal investigators. So, and we can be able to uh, develop the institution. There are other ways we can raise revenue. But um, maybe at another opportunity, when we have a larger house, we we'll come together, we we'll brainstorm, we we'll look, form groups with somebody chairing it, making suggestions, and then we we'll put it down. And then we we'll try to look for a way to execute them. See? So, then, how do we encourage staff to generate revenue? Yes. Um, in University of Ibadan, when you generate any revenue, for instance, this conference that we are having now, there are participants online. And we have told them, and they are hearing me now, that if you want to obtain certificates, you will pay a sum of 5,000 naira. So it's small. Yes, but let's start in the way. Departments can organize conferences. They can organize conferences, and people will come from industries, people will come from banks, people will come from organizations, and they will attend. Those of us who have that ability, we can organize conferences. And at the end of the day, you will be given facilita as facilitators you have remuneration. All the people that participated, you have remuneration. In University of Ibadan, where I'm coming from, in fact, there was a particular occasion where they, they gave me about 
so as participants in a in a workshop as a facilitator in a workshop and it was a donor i mean so a principal investigator who invited us to come and teach his people on budgeting on this on that and they facilitated me to the tune of about 500 dollars so which means they also got so we can organize workshops seminars even for people in our local environment here and they can they will come they attend they will benefit and they will pay and we have all the facilities for organizing conferences look at our big hall there look at this place it's free almost of the time we can use all these facilities and, and make income and generate revenue and the policy in ui is that 10 percent of it is for the university the rest is for the those who who generated it so you are free to if i saw bought a bought cars for projects in ui with such things so god will help us feedback on unsuccessful request you see I will plead with the person in charge of communications. Where I'm coming from, we have a booklet containing names, departments, names, telephone number, email. Not only that, we have um, um, a, an electronic copy of names, phone numbers, email on, on my desk that if there is a failure of request, then even in our cash advances, you know, little by little, we will modify some of those things. In our cash advances, there is a column there. You put your phone number, you put your email. All those things are not here. So, I mean, we are in a blank. So, all those things, little by little, we're going to amend them. So, when you're uh, when your transaction has failed, we send SMS to you. We send email to you. Why well, I struggle every day to get some of these things, and it is not a fault of my staff, which I met there. All these things will be put into order by God's grace. God helping us. Automation of our budget. Yes, that is where we are going. But the truth is this. To automate anything, it costs a lot of money. To automate anything cost a lot of money. But we will get there. Let's start from somewhere. So as we as we as we improve, you know one other thing that I've discovered. If we improve our financial system, it's not going to be long that it will be even known to donors. Donors are looking for where to put their money. But they are looking for a transparent financial system where they can put their money. But think of a situation where you organize a departmental program. You put your money inside a bursary. And before you know anything, you want to make use of that money for a conference, they say the money is gone. That you can't, you can't find that it has been spent. So if you want to win grant tomorrow, what are you going to tell your donors? Hello, sir. What are you going to tell your donor? Say, please don't put my... <laughs> so that's why we want to make sure that we have everything on ground. And one of the things that will help us is this chart of account. For instance, if somebody, a department is organizing a workshop now, all you need to do is send us the name of the department, the workshop you are organizing, and then we open a vote book for you. Not necessarily we go and open a bank account. We open a vote book for you, we'll give it a code. When you make your money, all you, we'll give you that code. You put it on your teller. You, f you scan the teller. You forward it to us. When we see the teller, we know this money belongs to so, 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 and so. Once we can confirm the money has been logged into our account, then the next thing is to put that money in your vote. As it comes in in trickless, we'll be putting it in your code. 
Before you know anything, 100,000, 200,000 is accumulating in that account. So when you want to spend, we go into your vote. Once we see the money in the vote, we execute, the, we execute it. See, but when we don't have a coding system, we will just be rattling our brain. We don't, where is your money? Where your people pay to your account? And how do we know the amount you paid? We can't know. We can't know. So the starting point is let us have a code and a chart of account. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the next agenda is the fourth presentation, Expenditure Tracking System in the 21st Century. Still going to be handled by Dr. Ojo Ayodele Fanero. Let's applaud him as he comes to the podium. Thank you very much. We talk of expenditure tracking system, ETS, in our 21st century. What do we have in mind? We want to be able to track our expenditure. Again, we want to have an overview of the budget cycle. We want to know why do budgets fail? Yes, many people budget. Many people prepare budget. Many institutions prepare budget. Many organizations prepare budget. But at the end of the day, the budget failed. Why do budgets fail? Then we want to look at budget expenditure tracking in practice. How do we track our expenditure? And then why do we even need to track our expenditure? Then we talk about expenditure tracking system as a tool for tracking spending. So we want to first of all look at budget tracking for efficient resource allocation. Why do we need to, why tracking budget spending? Why do we need to track budget spending? It is to avoid wasteful expenditure. We want to avoid wasteful expenditure. So we need to track our budget. And one of the ways to track our budget is that like the example that I gave you, we must have a vote book. We must have a vote book. After we have all defended our budgets, when we defend the budget, we have revenue allocation, then you have your expenditure. Of course, there is no way you can spend more than your income just as it happens in the family too. You may have bogus ideas. You may have very big budgets that, oh, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I want to buy a car. I want to build a house. I want to, um, uh, I want to send all my children overseas. Even me myself, I want to travel overseas. I want to make international trips, about four trips this year. But when you look at your income, and what came in, you discover that some of these things may not fly. Why are they not flying? Because the money to do all these things are not existing. The same thing in an institution. The same thing in an organization. The same thing in a department or in a faculty. So we want to be able to track so that it is not until the end of the year that we know that um, we have exceeded our budget. Now, let me tell you there's a scenarios in establishments without tracking system. In a place where there's who can speak, is the one who knows how to put prayer on maybe the, the management. They get what everything they want. See, but you see areas that are in need departments that are in need. You see them suffering. 
Again, let me paint this scenario. The 15 of us here, we have our budget. We have all submitted budget. This one wants to spend 1,000. That one, 2,000. That one, 4,000. On and on like that. Now, your own spending is not now. Your own spending in your department will come up around December. So, you didn't bother to apply because you don't need the money now. But other departments, they, are, they, are, they see the need. Whether they even need or they don't need it, but they quickly brought. And because there is money in their account, as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, the, we receive the as soon as we receive the, uh, uh, the request, because there is money in the account, it is approved, so it flies. The same man in the same department A applies again. As soon as once there is money in the account, we approve, it flies. So by the time you now need your own, the account is already exhausted. And you have not put on one request since the beginning of the year. You are now putting it up now around December. And they say there is no money in the account. That is what happens where there is no tracking system. That's what happens where there is no tracking system. And that's what is existing in the public sector. And why the, 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 the thing is not well pronounced, well known is existing, but why people don't know is because they are getting grants. Government is the one paying their salary. They are not the one. So, you can prepare a budget and keep it there. When the year comes to an end, you now prepare uh, uh, you compare budgeted with actual, and you come up with a report. But, <laughs> If we do that in the private sector, the private sector will collapse. So there is therefore the need to track the budget, to track the spending, so that we avoid wasteful expenditure, and then we give priority to all departments and units. And we give priority to areas of priority. Now, budget tracking for efficient election. Why, why do we need to track spending? Come and see what an activist in Uganda, what he said. He said the answer lies in what this activist said. He said sometimes our public officials, they seem to get confused between what is public money and what is their money. It is possible to spend government money with personal money. Thank God this is a faith-based and thank God that we have God-fearing people in this place. But I know from my experience that people do spend government money as their own. How does it happen? It's not, it's not, so, it's not so complicated. It's so easy. It's so easy. All they do is to facilitate somebody to come and represent them in the project committee. He's one of the contractors. He bid for the project. And they will make sure, since they are insider, and that's what in the banks we call it insider trading. That's what is called insider trading in the bank. What they do is that they know their highest bidder. All they will need to do is to tell that person, bid this. So the person wins the grants. So the money is pumped into that person. But it is top management that actually is the owner. Immediately, he uses the money to finance projects outside. And he's making profit. The contract is unexecuted. Yet, is the, the money is being used for another project somewhere and is getting returns. After about six months, after he has turned the money over and over, then he brings the money back. 
to come and do the project now at exorbitant cost, at inflationary cost. And they will still request. They will still request again for budget differentials. That's what is happening in most of the ungodly public sectors. So, how do you detect that? It's through tracking. It's through tracking. You track that money has been released and job is not done. So, there are many ways of doing that. We shall soon get there. We have the steering committee. We have the project committee. That should be in existence in an organization. Project committee, steering committee, in the United system, all the, 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 the steering committee, the, the, the project committee, the tender committee, all those ones are to follow up once a money is paid for the execution of a project, this project committee must set up to see it. And you see visitation panel. You know, in UI, we have third fund project so being executed by third fund for the university. And the panel will come to inspect the project which they have spent money for. You see? So, there must be in existence that kind of a committee in a system so that they follow up to ensure. Interestingly, you know, as telling you, we have a challenging vice chancellor. Very challenging. He does, <laughs> I don't know whether you observe. Anytime I'm, I'm, I'm going to my office, I'll meet him there. Look, supervising the projects by himself. When I'm going back in the night, just the night, when I was going back, I met him and the wife outside there. Looking at all those people. Looking at the project. Where are you going to? And you will go up and down. You will see this one. This. She's combining the job of project committee with that of steering committee, almost everything. So I thank God for him. So that is the reason why there should be a tracking system. Now, the budget cycle, just quickly go over them so that when you are preparing your own budget, you know uh, what is going on in budget. Number one is the budget formulation. And it's really handled by the management. So all HODs and Ds, they are the top, they are the management of the institution. So it's handled by the management. But you have also middle level management. So you discuss at the departmental level, at the, at the faculty level, you discuss. So with your middle level management, when you are coming up with a budget. Number two is budget approach. It, in the government sector, it goes to the legislature for approval. So, but here, it comes to top, top level management. So, we discussed, that's why we are going to have budget defense. I think it's tomorrow. This budget defense is tomorrow, am I correct? So, so, so at that level, that is what we are doing. We are trying to fine tune our budget and see which one will be approved, which one cannot fly. Then number three is the budget execution. So after the money has been released onto you, there's need for us now to go and spend. That is budget, budget execution. And then there is budget oversight. That is we review it, we review it from time to time. Have we done what we said we have taken money for? And the auditor comes in, checks. So before uh, maybe um, we finally complete the year. And he gives a report at the end of the day. So that is the cycle in a nutshell. Now, why do budgets fail? Why do budgets fail? There are many reasons. One is poor financial management system. And I ask myself, what is poor financial management system? Is that poor financial management system is that we are expected to rank our needs in order of priority. But a poor financial management system is a spending that does not follow order of priority. 
It's like when I went to the market, I didn't plan to buy something, but I met somebody in the market who is a good marketing manager and is promoting one product. I didn't plan to buy, but because of the, 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 the promotional ability of that person, and I buy. So after buying it, I now got to where I really wanted when I, what I went to the market to go and buy. And I look at my pocket. No money again. That is poor financial management. So we put our priorities right when we want to spend. We must rank it. Which one is the... And you make sure you submit... Since you are now, you, by God's grace, you will know your allocation. So put your priority right. The one that is top most to you, that's the first thing you buy. That's what, what, you, what you raise voucher for. That's what you send requests for. So that is... Um, two is corruption at high level. At high levels. At the, uh, um, uh, this is a faith-based. Uh, we don't expect it, but it can happen. When somebody has lost his faith in God, he can enter into corruption. It's so easy to spend government money, to spend institutions' money. It's very easy. We have gotten money. You have been. You have. We have uh, uh, said we want to buy uh, maybe a laptop. We want to buy an equipment for the department. The money gets into your account. You say ah. I've not paid the school fees of my children. Let me quickly use it. And pay the school fees of my children. I will return it. But the more you struggle to return, you find it difficult. The more you struggle, the more you find it difficult. Before you know anything, you are trying to cover it up. It's very easy. So poor for, uh, corruption, fund diversion. We got money for one item, that thing we just divert it to another thing entirely. Or say, let me borrow it, use it for an investment. When I finish and I get return, then I will quickly go and do it again. Use of reserve during unexpected events. We have, um, 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 uh, uh, we have maybe you, we, like for instance, uh, they sent me to travel to one of the high schools. The money remained. And the uh, knees were flying up and down. In fact, my wife wanted to renew NAVDAG registration. And they go to school. You don't check their pocket. You don't check their bags. They come home with somebody's pencil, somebody's eraser. So because nobody's checking, no oversight on those children. These children already grew up in that environment. When they now become older, and you now hear, they are doing this, they are doing that, you now want to check, it's too late at that time. So when we have poor oversight, even over the phones that are giving out, that can make budget to fail. Budget tracking in practice. What is budget tracking? It entails conscious monitoring. Monitoring institution budget implementation process and ensure that all revenues budgeted for are properly and accurately realized. It was when we did the performance, uh, performance evaluation of the last budget, we discovered, in fact, it was shocking to many men when I presented the list of debtors and the amount of debtors. And some have even gone to NYSC and they are still in anchor. When I presented it, they were shocked. So we must track our revenue and see that, and all of us will join hand to make sure that our debtors pay before they leave. I was asking myself, how did they sit for examination when they have not paid us? Yes, we can be lenient and allow them to pay 
on gradual basis. But before somebody will write his final exam, at the end of the semester, he must pay us. And we have debtors running to million, to about 20 something million, about 30 something million. Just imagine if we had that 30 something million with us now. So that's why we need to track our revenues and ensure that everything accumulates into our account. Budget tracking tools. This can be done through committee system. In, in our university system, we run committee system. In the communities, they can use community NGOs. We can use advocacy groups. They can use um, other functions, like in the local town, they can use uh, obas. They can use uh, the 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 ballets to supervise projects to ensure that these things are done. What is the what are the methodology? We have to define the scope of the audit in tracking our budget. We have to define what we want to track. Then we have to de develop a clear understanding of the management programs or projects. We need to obtain information on programs or that audit. Like this accreditation that now, we must track our money. All money that we have spent on accreditation for architecture for law, we must track them and see that they are spent on them. And the money is not mutilated. That's why when procurement submitted uh, some things, I said, I, I queried some things. I said, please provide evidences of the spending of this money. It's not just that uh, uh, um, the, uh, I posted the money to Susu so I can't. I posted the money to Susu so No, 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 no. That's not the evidence. You must, we must have evidence. The receipts must show. The items must be counted. And when they are, we are painting, we see evidence. It's been supervision committee so supervise and see that the painting was completed. Then we cannot clear the advance or whatever. Collating information, distribute information, all public uh, hearings. So this is our own public hearing now. We are, we are deliberating together. So and then also um, at the committee level, we deliberate together. Now, in practice, this budget tracking is a UNDP uh, a, a project, project. It's a UNDP development. So, it has been used in some countries. It may still be a little bit new, but it's not new in real sense of it. It's not new, but is in the literature now it appears a little bit new but in practice it's not new to us that we need to track our budget so in Nairobi, in Nairobi it was through this budget tracking they were able to discover that allocations which were made for students about 20 percent of those allocations to students as a bursary award the bursary came, but those students are no longer in the institution, and the money entered, and uh, nobody talked. How were they able to track that? It was through this expenditure tracking survey. You were able to know that bursary was given, bursary award were given to students, but those students have left the school, and yet the money was not refunded. It was also used in Uganda in 2010, and they were able to discover that money disbursed for, for supply of medical materials, no record to show that the item came in and the item went out. It's like if we buy drugs into our health center here, 
and there's no evidence that the thing entered and there's no evidence that they went out yet we got there and there's nothing there again and they put another another bill up that we need medical uh, we need medicine in, in the medical center so we can't detect that if there is no tracking we can't detect if there is no tracking Somebody buy a computer for the department. It has happened many times in UI that UI does not even know the houses he's owning outside. I'm telling you the truth. Over years, somebody was living in a house belonging to the United This father died and the children were claiming ownership of the house because and nobody was asking. Because the university does not even know, no record of their assets. No record. You see somebody who went to repair university vehicle in the mechanic workshop. And the vehicle is there for many years, especially during the strike period, during the uh, pandemic period. The pandemic is over, and they don't even know that the departmental vehicle has left yard, has left you are. And it's in another mecha. If the mechanic just sold it off, nobody didn't ask. It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. So, exponential tracking system allows us to locate those university properties that are lying in the houses of people. Those university properties that are even in the mechanic village of uh, some, somebody. It's this tracking system that allows us to see them. There are six steps in expenditure tracking system. You have to demand an objective. You have to map resources flows. How are our resources flowing inside and outside? We have to collect and analyze data because we throw out our survey. We send surveys out in order to track those items. So we identify, we analyze. We identify the issues, then we make recommendations, and then we disseminate the results, and we advocate for change. So all those items that um, uh, belong to the university, and they are, we, they, we have to uh, withdraw them back. Budgeting system. In Uganda, in the mid-1990s, the World Bank, a major donor in the Uganda government, observed that Despite a significant increase in Uganda's budgetary allocation for primary schools for more than a decade, enrollment in primary schools remained stagnant. Then it was suspected that leakages or diversion of funds might have caused less funding to reach primary schools than was, than was budgeted to support them. So we see diversion here in Uganda. That was observed. But if they didn't track, there is no way they can know that the money allocated had been diverted. So though there is allocation, no increase in enrollment in those schools. Again, between 1991 and 1995, it was discovered only 30 percent of annual per student grants reached primary school on the average. It was through this tracking system that it was discovered. There could be misappropriations. If there is no tracking system, there is no way we can discover. In fact, we are told that half of the schools did not receive any funding. Yet there was allocation. In Nigeria here, yeah, we have roles that, are, that have been labeled uh, third road. Because allocation was received and those roads, nothing was done on those roads. But in the project office, those roads were already tired. It is this tracking system that enables us to discover all that. So, exponential tracking system is a methodology for tracking not only public expenditure, even for 
private institutions expenditure. It can, it can track the flow of resources through various levels of government, through various departments and faculties, and see those leakages. Budget tracking in practice, there are other tools that is being used for budget tracking. We have enacted budget, year report, supplementary budget, and year-end report. Now, let's see um, a tracking survey example. In Ghana, in 2000, there were 200 clinics, but only 80% of them, only 20% were salaried. 80% were not salaried. How were they able to detect that? It's two budget tracking system. There are other tools for budget tracking. We have what is called the differential exponential efficiency measurement and all the rest. Um, let's just quickly round up by saying Yes, a simple impact measurement application specimen. We can see there development budget item, the budget amount, the sources of fund, the actual expenditure, and is the expenditure producing desired benefit? You see, this is a survey that was sent out, and they were able to discover a lot of. Um, misappropriations to the survey. In conclusion, may I say that budget, budget execution and implementation cycle is important and relevant for our age. Budget expenditure tracking is very essential in our this 21st century. It helps us to ask the question, where is our money? I want to say thank you very much for attending this workshop. Thank you very much, sir. Our amiable doctor and bossa of this precious and privileged institution. Before, as we come close to the end of this workshop, the next program or agenda is for us to take in questions or contributions based on this just concluded discussion. If you have any question, any suggestion, any contribution to what you have heard so far, you can signify with a raise of hand. Anybody? Online audience, any question? Any contribution? So I would like to call on Mr. Fashimiri Oludari to please come to give us the vote of thanks. And thereafter, we expect on the podium Professor D.S. Adeyonju, I think that's the Dean of, fac of the Faculty of Humanities, to give us the closing prayer. Let the photographers also be at a lot because they will take the group photograph.
We give all the glory and honor to the Almighty God who has made today a reality. And we want to sincerely appreciate our dynamic Vice Chancellor who has given us the enabled environment to operate, I mean, to organize this workshop. We want to also extend our appreciations to our resource persons, uh, the our engineer, engineer Kende, that came all the way from Ibada, that took us through the procurement. We want to say a big thank you to him. We also want to thank our deputy vice chancellor, the registrars of the institutions, for coming along with us in this particular workshop. We say a big thank, thank you to them. We thank our bossa the substantive bosal of the Angkor University, Dr. E. Ufanero, uh, for giving us, uh, for taking us through these workshops on budget in the 21st century. We also want to appreciate our deans, we appreciate our HODs and head of units for finding times to come to this workshop. We say a very big thank to you we want to appreciate the Icon and Alimo Show District Society Chairman in person of uh, Mr. Olusola Uwoyele and uh, the Escos of Icon Alimo Show District Society for two minutes fee to come along with us in this workshop. We also want to thank our online participant who also, uh, they may fade out of their busy schedule to participate in this great workshop. We say thank you to you all. We also want to appreciate those who, uh, who help us in the technical area, our ICT, our people from mass communications, and we also want to thank the, all the bursary staff that help us in one way to make this workshop a huge success. Our prayer is that all that we have learned, all that we have been exposed to, the Lord will help us to make the best use of them in Jesus' name, and that we will not lose our reward in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much for that wonderful vote of thanks. Um, it's like our amiable dean for the faculty of humanities is not uh, pre is not present. <laughs> call on engineer Felix Ime Akpasa, the head of the PPW, to come and give us the closing prayers. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you this afternoon for bringing us this far. Thank you for this grooming workshop on budgetary control as well as procurement relevance in this 21st century practice of both funds allocation expenditure as well as accountability we want to be at our best as an institution and that's why you have carved this out at such a time like this for major stakeholders in this university we please request lord that all that we have learned will not just end in the books but what is obtainable for standard practices in the university structure as far as finances are concerned. We pray you help us to practice accordingly in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, you help us because your word says, let all things be done decently and in order. 
we please request that graces that we need to make the lines to be straightened from the crookedness of the previous practices we've not done well. Help us to look inwards again and do perfectly well moving forward in Jesus' name. All the relevant offices that need to key into these best practices, you help us that we'll do it without conflicts or personal interests or conflict of purposes so that, Lord, at the end, we'll be able to achieve that which is required of us. As we go from here, we pray all the resource persons will strengthen them. All those that have given out one way or the other, all that has been given out, you replenish hundredfold in Jesus' name. We pray for those who have attended. You will help us not to be forgetful here. Us. Thank you because we know it is done. And we all ask that as we join hands together to walk our fingers to the bones, to make Anchor University what it ought to be, grant that this vision will not go down the drain. We're grateful because we know you've heard and answered. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. We may kindly have our seats. So we use this medium to bring this workshop to a close. God bless you for coming. Um, I think the next online is for us to receive our refreshments and take the group photograph. I don't know the strategy and communication, if they are available. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. God bless you. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent performance standards, then Alcoa University, university is, is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Humanities and Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical and Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get a ticket for this flight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can all be there through the GPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent performance standards, then Alco University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Humanities, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and www.aul.edu.ng Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the GPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you are out for a university that offers quality education and excellent performance standards, then Alcoa University, university is, is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UT in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Humanities, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical and Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment. 
with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent living standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent living standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anchor University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students with our UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anko University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent living standards, then Anko University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 ETH in the school, you can choose from any of our programs in the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Management, Social and Management Sciences, and the Faculty of Natural, Applied and Health Sciences. You can also choose from any of our new courses like Nursing Science, Architecture, Public Health, Law, Environmental Management and Toxicology, or Medical Lab Science, all of which will be available by September. Anko University at Ayobo Lagos offers world-class education in a serene and secure environment with excellent facilities and distinguished lecturers. You don't want to miss a chance to get your tickets for this fight. Don't be late! To register for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. 
credit staff for any of our programs, please visit www.aul.edu.ng. Students without UTME can also be admitted through the JUPEP program. For more inquiries, please contact 0906-122-3042 or 0905-050-0021. Anchor University. Character, competence, courage. Don't be left behind. The flight is about to take off. Get your ticket for the 2022-2023 undergraduate admission today. If you're out for a university that offers quality education and excellent performance standards, then Anko University, University is the deal. deal. With a minimum of 160 UTM score, you can choose from any.